COVID test uh, per week since we've come back and we've only had one positive. Knocking on wood, it's, it's, it's Wednesday. Tomorrow we do another saliva test and then we'll do another rapid test on Friday as we get out just before we uh, get ready to go uh, on Saturday. So, but the kids did a remarkable job of, of staying safe, keeping each other healthy, following the protocols. And, and so they are really excited. I mean, they are jacked up to get on the field and you may see some uh, celebration penalties. Uh, I'm not going to say they're not going to happen, but our kids are jacked. And if for some reason they can't play, it will totally devastate them. I'm just telling you, but, but so far so good. I'm not counting anything until we get past Friday, but, uh, and that's kind of how it's been. It's been kind of a get up, solve the problems today, go to sleep, get up the next day, solve the next problem. There really hasn't been a lot of planning and whatever planning that we've done, we've kind of had to change anyway with new COVID rules coming out or, or new ways to be safer. And the NC2A and the CDC has also released different things as we've gone along that we've had to adjust and pivot to. But uh, the, kids have been, the kids have been very good. And essentially our attitude is uh, we're gonna find a clean piece of dirt, put the football down and we're gonna play. And I don't care who's on the other sidelines. I don't care what we're doing, but uh, we're going to play as good as we can. And then we're going to play one play and then we're going to finish that play, play the next play. And, uh, and so if we can do that, I, I like, I like the team athletically a lot. And, and I think in some places we'll be better than we ever have been, but will we get to game ready speed as quickly as we can? That's going to be the key. So I'll shut up. That's a dissertation right there. I didn't mean it to be, but uh, questions. And that that kind of leads into one question that we had come in prior to to this starting was what is it like what's it feel like going on the field in the spring as opposed to the fall is that weird is there a, is there some kind of transition you guys have to make to playing in the spring as opposed to playing in the fall that's that's been the hardest thing for ourselves and our staff because the, the unique thing about football at the college level is there are really four distinct seasons there's the season in the fall, then there's recruiting season, then the spring season and the spring recruiting, and then you have the summer with the camps and everything. So you really have a very regimented uh, lifestyle, frankly, and that's all been whacked out. You know, the, the fall semester, I didn't know what day it was. I didn't know what month it was. And, and right now, it really feels a lot like September to me uh, on the field, because that's when obviously we'd be lining up to start playing people. Um, so it's, it's been, it's been a bit of an adjustment. I would be lying if I said I've made the total adjustment, but, uh, but it's been, it's been unique. And again, I credit the players and the, and the assistant coaches and, and, and you need to understand the, the massive to, to get a game of football going with, we've got 117 kids on the team, but when you're testing people, we're testing all the trainers, all the strength coaches, all the coaches, anyone who comes into that's 170 people every time we test. And, and that test costs between 55 and $75 per. So we're spending about 15 grand a week when we start, when we start um, testing as we're gonna test protocols as the season started. And so, and the massive undertaking that everyone's doing to keep everyone safe, even at the game, you know, making sure we're temperature check everybody, making sure that everyone's wearing masks, making sure the, the stadium's out laid, so, laid out so that people don't, um, you know, that so they do so, social distance and those things. So. Uh, it's really a credit to the athletic department and then compound that we're doing every spring, every sport right now on our campus, every sport is going right now. And so probably the over, most overworked person on campus, either is either Jeff Altier or, or uh, Ben Cousins, who's our facility director, because there's something going on every day. And, and so really credit to the athletic department and the university of, of kind of all hands on deck we're going to give these kids that collegiate experience uh, from a football perspective or, or a other thing has been, it's been great. So, uh, so you need to know that uh, it's not just those 11 guys who are on the field at one time. There's a lot of people in the background doing a lot of hard work to make sure we get where we need to go. And, uh, and it's a credit to everyone. And, and what it gets down to is just like what the, what the, uh, the SEC and the ACC said, we got to, we have the will to get through this. We will do what it takes to get through this. And Stetson within the Pioneer League that I bet has been one of the leaders there saying, hey, we're gonna find a way. We promise these kids an opportunity to play division one football and we are gonna do everything we can to honor that promise. And I couldn't be more proud of the effort everyone's putting in to get that done. So I'm very thankful. And, and obviously, um, um, of course, if we lose this game, I'm not gonna be very mad, but, but, uh, but uh, but really, it's been really a mammoth undertaking, and, and I can't compliment those people enough. 
Absolutely. They've all, they've all done a great job. Jeff, I know I see he joined a few minutes ago. I hope you've got a glass of scotch tonight enjoying it, Jeff, because you certainly deserve it. Um, I know I see Stephen Lee have their hand raised. Go ahead. Um, hey, everybody. It's so exciting to be here. We're, we're so excited. Um, as you probably know, hi, Jeff Altier. <laughs> hi, Rena. Hi, everybody. Hi, Woody. Hi, Alex. Hi, Roger. Uh, our, our, or my question is, um, and, and I'm sure this applies to Stetson as a whole, but since we're talking about athletics and football, um, well, my question will be about that, is that once their group becomes available, their age group, whenever that rolls out, will Stetson play a role in helping whatever students and student athletes want to, to get a vaccine? And, and what does that, you know, what do you have those discussions look like and what, if anything, are the projections of how that will will change or bring back any normalcy to um, to football seasons and football games? I'll turn that over to Jeff. He's had those high level discussions way above my pay grade. <laughs> Roger, thank you. I, I appreciate that, and I hope this is working. Can you hear me all right? Because I'm on my phone. Perfect. Um, yeah, Lee, Steve, it's it's been a uh, a great time to understand. How, how do we navigate this and whether vaccinations, uh, as they become more available, how we are going to use them and be a part of our, our whole process. I will tell you to start with, our goal is to have all students on campus, in the dorms, in double rooms, in a normal situation or close to normal situation for this coming fall. So when we get into this fall semester, we're looking at uh, trying to be as close to normal as we can be. Um, and the vaccinations are going to play a big role with that. The university has been exploring ways in which we can uh, certainly uh, be a site. We haven't secured that and we don't have that in place yet, but we're trying to look to see if there's a way in which the university could be a site for vaccinations. Uh, the vaccinations will not be required when we start this fall. And the only reason why they won't be required is we just, uh, number one, they haven't got FDA approval yet. Uh, and there are some other elements that availability still with this population is going to be difficult. But for the most part, we're encouraging everybody to get vaccinations. We can reach herd immunity and make this something that makes the college experience very good. But it's going to take everybody uh, willingness to seek those out. And, and hopefully uh, we will have the opportunity to vaccinate the entire population as we move forward. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Hey, time, Lee. Hey, Alex, if I could just give Roger some really good football advice. And, and Roger, you know that I'm a very technical football person. I understand football from a technical standpoint. But I've been thinking about you this year, and I thought maybe it's really important that we really emphasize about how we should protect the kicker so that we can make defend sure, the defend the kicker, so we can really win some games this year. So I hope that in your strategy that you really emphasize the defending the kicker, I will be in the stands and reminding you that very clearly as we go through this, this season. So hopefully that will be helpful to you. And I agree. I'm I completely and totally agree with that. <laughs> if for, for, for everyone, <laughs> making the story very, very quick. I'm from Texas. We're all obviously all about football. Florida's all about football. Steve did not grow up with football, so we're in the stands. Everybody's cheering. It gets Deathly quiet, and Steve yells out, defend the kicker. And I looked at him, I go, nobody says that. <laughs> nobody says that. We do now. <laughs> so now we say defend the kicker when we're making fun of Steve. Here, here's the deal. That guy misses a kick. He better defend him from me. Okay. <laughs> there we go. But I, so so they, there, there are certain things the team knows that if they do on the field, they just will keep walking because they just, we will go right to the locker room. I don't even want to talk to them. But uh, – you know, and, and that's one of the things we've had that changed, you know, both Matthias and, and uh, Johnny Messina opted out their senior year and had transferred. I think Johnny went to Boise State. And now he's at uh, Maine. And then um, Matthias actually ended up going to uh, Miami and he actually punted one punt down there. So, you know, like a lot of our positions, there's going to be some very new faces. Uh, you know, Brady Lawrence, whose dad's on here now, he'll be our he'll be kicking off for us and he's our backup field goal kicker. Cam Gillis, who's actually from Hungary, believe it or not, that, that, and that's the country, okay? That's not just what I am every noon. Uh, he's going to be our, our field goal kicker. And then we have a transfer uh, from Jacksonville 
um, Matt Clements will be our punter. He's actually from Australia. And so uh, we have probably our most internationally diverse group uh, uh, to, to join us. And so we've actually had four transfers from Jacksonville University. They know they drop football and all four of them are going to end up uh, uh, contributing very, very uh, in a very substantial way, I think, as the season goes on. Awesome. And then uh, we had another question come in here, and this is going to be a total flip from where we've been going. And everybody feel free to chime in in the chat box or, or tune in and, you know, say whatever, whatever's on your mind. But one that came in, what is your favorite food or beverage item at a tailgate, Roger? Mine? Yep. I never get a chance to tailgate. What are you talking about? I, I was <laughs> working at that time. If you could, if you could be, what would it be? Well, I tell you what, I there, I did go to with one of my former college roommates. I went to a Chicago Bears game um, two two winters ago, and they had some teriyaki lamb chops that were grilled that were absolutely phenomenal. And I don't know exactly what beverage he had in my in my uh, drink, but it blended very well with, with with the meat that I was having. That's for sure. Um, yeah, gin. I do like I do like Hendrix with a little with a little tonic and gin and cucumber every once in a while. That that will get there. And I'm not opposed to to drink a little Crown Apple with a little ginger ale as well. That that one's a little scarier. Uh, a friend of mine turned me on to the uh, peanut butter flavored bourbon, peanut butter flavored whiskey. I had never had it before, but I've had it once, and my goodness, it's it's dangerous. It tastes too good. Don't want to mix it with much, but. Uh, yeah, keep talking. You're gonna think I'm an alcoholic, and probably I can be. If, again, if the if the kick doesn't go through, or they or the the pass isn't caught, I start drinking. See, there's a there's actually a clear fluid down there, all all mark, marked with three X's, and if things start going bad, I it's it's actually straight vodka. And if if what what I start is if if I have a bad play, I take two drinks. If I have a good play, I take one. By halftime, I really don't care. Jeff, you know, that's a joke. That is a joke. I don't want to get fired with cause here, okay? <laughs> that's awesome. And then one that just came in, <laughs> have, have you assigned anyone to sit with your wife, Laura, during the games this season? Well, you know, I got tired of buying Kevlar vest because anytime anyone sits by her, they're going to get pounded. She's into it. And someone, I think Woody actually recorded our last game that we beat Davidson up there. We won 56 to 51. And it just so happened that we were on defense the last drive and Reggie Gant actually came down with an interception. And Woody was gracious enough to send me that, uh, send me the vocals of my wife reacted to that. And, uh, and trust me when I tell you, it went viral right away because I couldn't wait to send it out <laughs> everywhere. She gets into the game now and she's not afraid to, to be use colorful language once when she's, when she gets going. So she's, she's uh -huh. into the game and she, and she wants to be part of the area where, you know, it's outside and going, but uh, um, it's, I'm probably the luckiest man in America by being down on the sidelines because if, if <laughs> she's into it now, and that's, and actually, yeah. believe it or not, that was one of the things that I'd never been able to do this fall. I actually got to watch football games with her at home. And I learned a lot of new language when I was listening to that one. Cause, cause she, she picks her teams with a quarterback. Okay. Especially in the pros. You know, she she loves Patrick Mahomes. Oh my God, loves Patrick Mahomes, and so she got so mad at the Super Bowl that she had to just she had to quit watching. She was so mad Tom Brady won another one. So, so she's but she's into it. She's the best, and 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 one of the things that probably a lot of people don't understand are the things that the coaches' wives give up. I mean, it, coaching, especially the college level, is not a job; it's a lifestyle, and you know our wives live and die with all the wins and losses. Uh, certainly they hear people in the stands who think we're really stupid or really smart, depending on what the score is. And, and, and they have to give up a lot uh, and certainly a lot of time or share us with a lot of time with, with all the other things that we're doing. So uh, they have to be a special breed to, to be able to hold up in that. And I have the best man. She's an absolute angel. Trust me. And I can attest. She is as physical as some of the players on the field. There's no easy Woody easy. Sitting next to her. <laughs> she, oh yeah. She's into it now. There's no question. I think uh, Rena volunteered Robin to come down and take one for the team and sit with Laura during the games this season. So that works out perfectly for us. That means we get to see Robin too. Perfect. It would be my pleasure. Sign me up. 
And thank you, Jeff, for answering that one in the chat. The band, unfortunately, will not be at home football games this season. We will not have the band at the games this season. And then the next one that came in, Roger, for you is, what is your favorite memory with Stetson football so far since you've been at Stetson? Wow, that's, that's a really good one. Well, there's, oh man, put me on the spot. <laughs> well, actually one of my favorites, most recent, and, and, and you see football coaches really have to have a short memory because um, unlike baseball, unlike basketball, you know, if you have a bad game, you're playing again in two days or maybe even the next day. And so you really don't have time to let it soak in. In football, you get one a week. And so you got six straight days of loathing yourself for making the wrong call or, or feeling bad about what happened or feeling great. And, uh, and, and so one of, the, one of the things that hasn't happened, but I hear it's going to, is Donald Parham, who had a great career in the NFL and, and uh, obviously led the XFL prior to that. He's actually coming back to finish his degree this summer. And, uh, and that's probably one of the greatest things one of the most exciting things uh, that's been uh, that's that's happened with Stetson football, you know, probably <laughs> going way back to the first game. I mean, it took us 56 years to have a game and it took us two days to finish the first one because we had to we had to have the rain delay and we couldn't finish until Sunday. And uh, and that was pretty, pretty crazy. And then, of course, this actually happened in practice. And I tell this story all the time. I. <laughs> I was talking in a recruiting meeting, our very first class we're recruiting. So I'm talking in a recruiting meeting with the parents and I'm trying to make the kids and parents understand that with a startup program, there are gonna be glitches, okay? There's gonna be some things that happen out of the ordinary. So I'm sitting there in the middle of my speech and I'm trying to think, okay, what example could I use? And so, uh, so I thought, I know, for example, we may run on the field, there'll be no goalposts, okay? And we just, we just won't be able to, uh, to do anything, but we don't need a goalpost to be good. We can line it up and do whatever we need to, and, and we'll just fight through all that stuff as long as we get better every day. No kidding. Three days later, Jeff calls me in. He goes, Roger, I'm sorry to tell you, we forgot to order goalposts. And so we actually went into the first season without goalposts. And the other thing that we we did is we we had, if you look at our practice facility, we have big light poles going up. And so we had pads that go around them. And we're, we're doing the first practice and the equipment guy forgot to put the pads up. And of course our receiver runs out. And then of course the quarterback leads him right into the pole and he goes in, he's, he's going back like this to catch a corner ball and boom smacks the pole knocks himself out. And I'm thinking to myself, we've had football one day and we're getting our butt sued right now. It's over. We're done. Well, the next day the equipment guy put the pad up and he, and he mapped out a chalk line of the body as it impaled himself on the pole, which was, which was classic. And then, and then just before the, uh, the first scrimmage, we looked outside. The scrimmage is happening like at two o'clock in the afternoon. And, and the goalpost, the right uprights, just going up like this. Our, kick, our kickers have never kicked a field goal yet with actual goalpost. And so we line up, we're doing our scrimmage, and, uh, and we we kick the first one and we forget that there's no net behind that. And if you know, Minnesota runs right along that here comes a minivan right around there and shh, boom, drills a minivan just on the first kick that we had from scrimmage. So, and, and then the other thing was the first practice, it was crazy. I mean, people coming from all over and trying to take pictures of what we're doing. And I remember I was trying to coach the quarterbacks and there was a guy in the drill with a go with a GoPro camera trying to film, I said, "Dude, can you stand over here? I got to talk to my guys." And he was right back in there. So we actually the next practice, we actually had to put police tape up, uh, like they put around a uh, like they put around a crime, just to keep people away from that. And then the first scrimmage, there I don't know who had the, who had the pickup that pulled up in the parking lot, but he was all painted up, had the keg in the back, tapped. They are get they're hooking up. There are people all along the uh, outside fence with their lawn chairs, coolers for a practice. I mean, I'm going, this, this is crazy. And that's when I knew, you know, you know, the land's pretty football crazy. And, and uh, it was, it was, it was absolutely amazing. So those are, those are just some of the memories that we had. The first game as Jeff, as Jeff chatted in there was, was pretty amazing. And it would, that Sunday was one of the hottest things 
I'd ever seen, but you got kind of a glimpse of Donald, Donald Payne, you know, the very first play on the second day, you know, they line up for, uh, we had just scored, we just scored the first touchdown. So we kicked off and they're in third down and, and they don't get the third down, fourth down. He runs in, blocks the punt, scrapes it up, run, returns it for a touchdown. And kind of the rest is history. He had, he was all American three times here and played the NFL for three years and, and really a special player. It's awesome. And uh, Rena, Rena chatted one in. I know President Rolke visited with the team recently. Did he give them any advice as a former student athlete himself? I thought he was just so happy to be outside that, that he, he was, he was giddy. How about it? Woody, you were there too. And, and uh, it's nice to have a president who understands all the things extra that athletes do. And, and of course it sets and a lot of the students have other activities, whether it be music or something else, but but he has a really good understanding of that. And I thought he did a really good job of talking about, you know, where his loyalties lie and, and wishing the team well and, and those types of things. And, and you know, a, a lot of places will look at things like it's extracurricular activity for football. Here at Stetson, we look at it as a co-curricular. It's part of the educational process. And, and the leadership that these kids are learning and the teamwork, camaraderie, uh, how, to, how to, you know, get along with others, um, you know, can't be, can't be, it can't be replicated in the classroom. It just can't. And, and he made that very clear to the guys that, that his, his teammates are the guys he still talks to to this day. He made some of his closest friends, his closest relationships with that and to cherish that. And then he said that at one time that uh, I, I can't remember who his favorite pro team was, but now it's Sets and Hatters. So that's his favorite team right now. So, uh, so I understand he's not going to be at the game, so I'm, I'm never going to invite him again, but, but, uh, but uh, well, that might be untrue. I may invite him one more time, but, uh, but no, it was good to have him down there. And I think our guys, I know our players really appreciated that when, when you know that the guy at the top has an understanding of the kind of the struggles that you go through, um, it, it is, uh, it's, it's really special. Absolutely. And, uh, Susie has a great question. Can you tell us a little more about any of the new faces that we'll see on the coaching staff this season? Uh, yeah, well, one you will have seen before. It's, it's got deja vu all over again. Uh, Jonathan Johnson rejoined our staff. Um, last fall, when, when the Pioneer League decided not to play, uh, Brian Young, our defensive coordinator for since we started the program, uh, had an opportunity to go be an assistant coach at his alma mater, Georgia Southern. And so he took that opportunity. And so to replace him, I brought him in. And then um, one of the coolest things is we have one of our former players who is actually volunteering for us in the offensive line, Pat Fogarty. He was in our very first class. He's done a phenomenal job. He's trying to get into coaching. Uh, Dwight Jackson on the other side of the ball, on the defensive side of the ball, he's also a volunteer. He comes from the West Coast. Uh, and, and both those young men are doing everything for us for nothing. They're getting paid nothing. They're just trying to get an opportunity to, to get into the profession. Steve Davis, who was with our, our staff last year, took over as defensive coordinator. Steve uh, has coached at some small places like LSU, Auburn, uh, Southern Miss, uh, has a wealth of knowledge and uh, really gets along well with the kids, really understands um, how to relate to the kids. Uh, and beyond that, well, Kyle, Kyle Faxling was here last year. He's our receiver coach and special teams coordinator. Uh, Russ Jackson uh, coached on offense one year he coached on defense last year we brought him back on offense and he's also helps with our director of operations so so those will be the the newer guys that are on the staff and and you know brian is you know there were two guys that have been here the whole time nolan who left a couple years ago and then brian just left and so i'm the lone survivor right now of that original staff uh that came in eight nine years ago. well she was almost 10 years ago now as i think about it yeah absolutely and uh one uh that came in here and you can correct me if I have the wrong game but they asked if you would comment on the win over Drake up there I believe it was Drake that we won on the last play when their players were on the field and thought that they had won already mm -hmm. yeah that was that was quite a deal um we uh we went down and we well the, the game really should have been close because in the first half we dominated the game we just couldn't score in the red zone for whatever reason we just couldn't score we we miss an opportunity just for half to get another field goal. So the game really shouldn't have been close, but it was. And we go down to score, I think, with um, a little under a minute to play. And, and we line up on defense the next play. We line up in press man and our, our freshman 
uh, Dwight Lawrence, he was a freshman uh, safety that time, just got whacked by the tight end out of the way. And he hit the tight end for like a 72 yard bomb to take the lead again. And we'll, we'll talk about the discussion I have with Brian playing press man in that situation. But uh, we ended up Colin McGovern then took the, took the team down and <clears throat> we had a situation where we had, uh, I think 16 seconds left on the clock. So we wanted to have a chance to, to throw it in the end zone once, or maybe it was nine, now that I think about maybe nine seconds. So we told him, listen, if, if the outside ball to the corner is not there, just throw it away. We'll kick the field goal and, and tie it. And so, uh, he looked, he didn't see it. So he actually ended up checking it down to one of our, one of our uh, receiver or to one of our running backs. And, uh, and he got hit pretty immediately. And as he's going down, he, he says, he says he fumbled the ball on purpose. Uh, Steve Burdett put it up and ran it in the end zone for the score. So I saw the, I saw the referee go like this right away. He signaled touchdown right away, but they, called the referees in to review it and and I when you're on the road rarely do you get one of those calls and uh <coughs> of course excuse me so after about a 30 45 second um uh, second delay the referees come out and say yes we had won the game and and if you get the if you didn't see the uh, radio playback or the video of that it was really interesting because the radio guys are talking about how we'd won the game and what's this and others oh, saying that that sets one well, he was down and and so it's it's really comical the, the other one that was crazy was at Campbell. We were at Campbell, um, I don't know, probably four years ago. And uh, we were up about 14 points. And uh, we're, our quarterback, our fourth quarterback gets knocked out of the game. Okay, so, so now actually it was our third quarterback gets knocked out of the game. So we bring in our fourth team guy, and I really didn't want to trust him. Well, we ended up getting a pump blocked. They score, and then they get, they get uh, the ball back with about a minute left and they're going down to drive it's fourth and seven and the ball falls incomplete but jeb boudreau roughs the passer so they get another first down so they go down and score so now the game's tied we go into overtime we go on defense first and uh i see jeb on the sideline and he's just a mess because he knows he screwed up i said jeb get your head up we'll fix this later but you're going to do something to help us win this game and so you need to you need to get ready to go we're going on defense first let's go so we go out there, we hold them to three, they line up for a field goal. And of course, who but Donald Payne goes through and blocks the kick. And there's Jeb, Jeb Boudreau picks it up and starts taking off. And, and we're down on about the 30 yard line. So he's got to go about 60 yards. And so he keeps, he keeps running down and running down and finally he just wears out and they almost tap him on the five and who, who else? He laterals up to Donald Payne who followed it in. He goes into the end zone and scores Stetson wins. It was on the top with the second best play of the week on ESPN. Now, a lot of people would have thought of the coach that did that. Why the heck did you give up 14 points and almost lose a game? Or some would have seen the marketing genius of allowing them to catch up, then going and winning in overtime and being on ESPN so everyone could see us to market sets them. Some may not see the genius of that, but, but a lot of people may. So you know what story I'm sticking with. Uh, all right, we had another one come in here from Tony. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, do you feel the team will be better prepared for the next fall season with this shortened spring season that they'll get to play this year? The answer is yes, and I'll, and I'll say that. The, the younger kids especially. Just think our freshmen right now have had a full spring practice to go through and all the lifting and development prior to playing their first game, they don't get that. And so I think it's going to give an opportunity for, for both the freshmen and the sophomores, but especially the freshmen coming in, there's going to be a lot of names that help us out this fall. And, uh, and so I'm really anxious to see how they do. Now, none of them played in the game yet, so game speed is different, as I said earlier. But, but yes, I, I think it can. And I think there's a lot of people who are concerned, well, you're playing six games and then you're playing 11 games in the fall. Is that too much for the body to handle? And, and the honest answer is we don't have a data point. We don't know. Uh, however, I do know that in Division Three, Division Two, and Division One AA, excuse me, they have playoffs and they'll play 15, 16 games in just a four month period. And so the plan right now is uh, the season will end on uh, April 17th. And then the playoffs end around March 15th, or I'm sorry, May 15th. So if we're lucky enough with the playoffs, we'll be done May 15th. 
at that point, we're going to give the kids six weeks off. So we're going to give the last two weeks of May, all of, all of June, and then we'll start back with summer conditioning in July. And, and I think if we do that, now we may have to modify how we practice. You know, we may have to do, you know, more walkthrough type stuff, less hitting that type stuff as we go forward and take a little more of an NFL model. But I really, I really am confident that, that their bodies will hold up and they'll have enough, enough time to, uh, to get reacclimated. Go back to this fall. You know, if we'd have played a game this fall, frankly, we, we would have been in bad shape. We, our, our bodies, their bodies were not ready because a lot of places didn't have gym was open. A lot of places didn't have fields they could run on. So when they came back in here, they weren't ready at all physically, uh, at all. And so it's really, if we're able to pull this season off and hopefully everyone stays COVID free, this actually was the best answer for us from a, from a developmental standpoint, because we, could, we couldn't afford, we don't, we don't pay for the kids to be here all summer. The power fives can do that and give them all the nutrition stuff. We can't. So for us, physically, it's actually much better that we're playing at this time. Gotcha. And we great did questions. Question. Yes, that is a great question. I didn't even think about this upcoming fall season. Um, well, this season yeah, we're doing everything we can to, to, uh, make this coming fall in 21 as normal as possible if there is a normal anymore right uh will this season's games be on espn plus or somewhere else we can view them remotely absolutely just like normal i know our home games for sure will definitely be on espn plus this year mm -hmm. that's true and then another one that came in. So with all of us not being able to be there physically in person right now, what's the best way for those of us who can't be there to support the Hatters right now? How can we best support the program? Well, a couple of things. One, um, obviously any donations are great. I mean, this, this let's, let's face facts. The testing that we're doing is 15 grand a week. And, and that's go that over about nine weeks. That's, that's substantial. Um, so, so anything like that, and, and frankly, the university as well uh, is is sharing a lot of the burden of this. And so, I, I got to tell you, I, and from my opinion, Stetson has really stepped up financially to make sure that that the kids are having as good an experience as they can and still stay safe. That's one thing. The other thing is, if um, uh, have have those ESPN two parties in your area. One of the things I miss the most is I haven't been able to do those alumni receptions all over the, the country. And so we're a little bit more um, disconnected. And, and so, you know, get those parties going, get them on ESPN2. And I promise you, as soon as we can get out in that area, we'll, we'll be back out to say hello and, and get reacquainted. And then the other thing that we have is um, roughly, I got to raise about 150 to $200,000 every year just to make the program go. And that's why We've started this 150 program, the football 150. Essentially, it's like the Pat Roberts deal back in the 700 club. You need $700,000, 700 donors, a thousand bucks. We kind of had that same idea. So if you join the 150, um, <clears throat> which is about a thousand bucks a year, it's about 83 bucks a month. Uh, that's the stuff that really makes a difference for our kids. For example, uh, we are we are prepackaging all the food or the snacks that they have. These guys, you know, the 300. We're going about six three, six four across the offensive line, and and uh, and they're weighing somewhere between two eighty and three hundred twenty pounds, and they consume a lot of calories. And they, you, it's hard for them with the academic rigors and the rigors of you know we're practicing early in the morning at, at six fifteen a lot of times, uh, and we don't have a training table. The only the only added calories they get are the chocolate milk we buy them, or the uh, or the snacks that we provide them, uh, or the post game meals that we have. So. So all that goes to buying those kids those nutritional supplements that they need as well. Um, we just had to buy a couple of new computers for the coaches when, and the computers are really everything that we do now, believe it or not, there's no 16 millimeter projectors going on. So all of our recruiting, all of our evaluation, all of our teaching really comes off of those. So the, the 150 is, is a way for us to supplement what the university can't pay for, or it also allows us to get some of those things that keep us on the cutting edge, such as uh, data programs like Teamworks, who allow us to communicate with our kids. And frankly, parents, you should know you get the communication on Teamworks well, so you know every itinerary, everything that your son's doing with the program. Um, so, uh, so all that's greatly appreciated. And, and the bottom line is you're investing in young men, and that's and that's really what it is. You're investing in young men, and and if you asked anyone at Stetson what the football team stands for, we build leaders. We build leaders. That's what we do. End of story. And what I'm really excited about, there's some people on this chat right here who 
have taken the time to become mentors for our kids, have taken calls, tried to get internships for them at, at, at their, in their junior year or whatever. Those are, Stetson helping Stetson is what it's all about. And, and Stetson can't be a great university without the energy and the involvement of a great alumni network. And, and we're starting to see that get really energized and get going. And uh, it's really exciting to, to, to be able to make that connection for our kids to some of our alums who have been very successful and really want an opportunity to help a young person come along because every one of you had someone help you. Every one of you had someone who, who kicked you in the butt to get you going, so to speak, or put that arm around you, gave you the hug when you needed it too. And, and now it's your time. And, and that is invaluable, especially in this generation where they haven't done a good job of learning how to build mentor type relationships. And so, so that's probably one of the best parts of my job is, is to be able to find that connection between a very successful alum who's willing to help and having our guys just connect with them. And I tell you, it's been a great experience for our guys as well. And it's, and it's really important from the standpoint it teaches our guys how to follow through, write a handwritten thank you, which, which I make sure they do, you know, call that type stuff. Uh, the little things make the difference and, and through your willingness to spend time with them, uh, they're learning those things. And it, what it does is it makes them, I've always said, if the ladder to success is 20 rungs high, you can get there from anywhere. But if you have a very energized alumni network and a, and a stick like Stetson, you want to start on rung 15 or 10. That's really the best way I could put it. You can get there from anywhere, but I'd rather start on rung 15. And that's what a place like Stetson should be doing. And I'm starting to see those things happen among the alum. And that's awesome. Yes, absolutely. And like Jeff said, that was that was perfectly said, Coach. Um, so we've got about 10 minutes left. Does anybody have any questions for Roger? Does anybody have anything else tonight? Feel free to turn on your mic and ask your question, or you can put it in the chat box if you'd like. But go ahead if anybody has any final questions before we kind of wrap it up here. The best part of doing it this way, when I do it at the receptions, I always got to wait till everyone's done eating because I don't have want any food thrown at me, if you know what I'm saying. So if, if everyone's eating their food, I don't have to worry about, about uh, sandwiches coming at me or tomatoes or anything like that. In fact, there was one time where, you know, football has kind of had a bad rep early in this COVID that, you know, a high contact sport. I thought I was going to have to get out in stocks and let people just throw tomatoes and, and potatoes in front of me to, uh, at the ATC. But, uh, but things have worked out and our guys – uh, our guys have really gone. Said what the offense is going to look like. I hope it looks like a like a scoring machine. <laughs> We're going to have a new quarterback, and I'm really excited about Alex Piccarelli. He is about 6'4", 225, runs very well, has a great arm. Um, he just he just you know he needs to play in the game. He needs. To, it's all about decision making at the quarterback position, and I've seen him improve all the time. And the other part is. <laughs> Our receivers are as big as they ever have been. We're going 6'2 to 6'4 across the way. And, and a couple of young kids that you'll see is Jamison Brundage. I think he was number 13. He's going to be, he's going to be a really fabulous player. Uh, Jalen Mason, who was a transfer from Jacksonville, he's plays in the slot there. Devin Thompson, who's a freshman, he's about 6'3 and really long. Uh, Quentin Lane, he's about 6'4. Mike Carley is a quasi tight end uh, who's about 6'4. And then we have Jeremiah Nails, who I, he's actually going to finish his master's this year. <coughs> I think Jeremiah's actually mentioned in the charter at a school he's been here so long, but uh, he, uh, he's uh, one of our captains and has really found a niche for himself as a, as a kind of an H back tight end type stuff catches everything running back wise. Um, we're going to be, I think we're going to be pretty deep. Jalen Leary will not play in this game for a violation of team rules. So he's suspended for this game, but uh we have a kid named Jordan Young Humphreys, who again, who was a transfer from Jacksonville. And I think he's going to be really good. Juan, uh, 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 Juan Wilson is, a, is another kid who will back up there as well. Um, so I think, and our offensive line is pretty much experienced. We're, we're going, you know, uh, we, we have a probably 20, we probably have a hundred starts among them uh, on, the, on the front five that we have going there. And so uh, we're probably deep in the offensive line as ever have been. On the defensive side of the ball, I'll start with the defensive line and we got Furman Reed, Greg Moore, and, and, and we have a transfer, Nolan DeFranco uh, from University of North Carolina. Nolan's six foot seven, 260 pounds that can run. And he's really good. And back in <clears throat> Greg, Greg Moore is, has really been playing well at nose guard and he's going at about 320 right now. And then Furman Reed who bench pressed 
405 pounds for five, a set of five the other day. Uh, we're as big and as strong in the defensive line as we ever had. But behind them, Jack Benzia, Jeffrey Liu, and, and Josh Hughes will be backing them up. And I think we've got two really good rotations. Seth Witt, who's going to be a senior, we moved him from offense to defense. He is really coming on. Hunter Smallback as well. So defensive line-wise, we're pretty good. Linebacker-wise, um, Talon Coates. Listen for that name, Talon Coates. He is a sophomore, but he's about 6'4 now, and he's going about 225 and is really running very well. Ethan Hull was another transfer from Jacksonville. He was the freshman defensive player of the year last year. So on our team, we had the offensive freshman of the year, Jalen Leary, the defensive freshman of the year, and Ethan Hull, who transferred. And we've got the freshman of the year, special teams-wise, Jalen Johnson. And so all those guys uh, are going to add some, some great things. Hunter Stevens is, is an old reliable. He's trying to graduate this fall, this spring, but he's been around a long time. And then um, um, we've got Kyle Shioni, who's a, who's a, freshman ROTC person and uh, he is going to open some eyes as well as an outside backer and in the secondary um, Razzie Littlejohn who's a sophomore or I think he's a redshirt freshman actually uh, he's going to start uh, we've moved Dwight Lawrence to what we call our dog safeties so Dwight had started for us number seven for a long time but he's he's switched position just because Razzie's playing so well and then Jalen Johnson at one corner and Nate Curitan, who Nate, I'm so proud of him. He's, he's hung in there. He's his senior year, and, and he's found that niche to, to, uh, to get going. So, uh, so again, I think, I think on, on film, we're going to be pretty good uh, defensively, but it's going to take, you know, uh, Davidson runs that triple option offense, which is hard to, which is really hard to defend and hard to get used to. The other, the other linebacker that, you know, I don't want to say he's going to make you forget about Donald Payne, but but he's, I think he has a chance to be pretty good. Again, he's, he's suspended for this game, but you'll see him oh, hopefully over the next five is uh, Majesty Hansberry. He's a transfer. He wanted to come here initially and we couldn't get the finances worked out. And he went to a place that he figured out that it wasn't quite as nice as Stetson. So he, he ended up coming back at semester last year. And uh, he, I, I'm so pleased with him, not only on the field, but his leadership and how he's matured off the field. He's really uh, I think going to be a special player and, and he's becoming a special leader and, and that's fun to watch too. So uh, I went over the kickers before, but that's, that's kind of where we're at right now. Some of the names that you'll see uh, I've wanted to get this team on the field for about six months. Cause I, I really think athletically we have a chance to be better than we ever have been. Will we play like it? I, 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 I don't know what we're going to get on Saturday. I, you know, there's going to be so much emotion on that field. It's going to be crazy. And, 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 you know, the other person I forgot to mention was uh, uh, Josh Hughes. He's, he has, he went from gray shirt to activation. He does everything you ask him to do and works his butt off. He is awesome. And so you're going to see him a lot on special teams just because he's worked his tail off to get there. And uh, he's one of those kids that want my foxhole every time. If, if he was going to be there, he's really, he's really come on and done a good job. So, so I, again, I like this team. I like what it stands for. The hard part is we haven't had that three weeks of bonding all together all by ourselves. And so some of the younger guys are still learning kind of the suite of core and how we do things. And the older guys, we're still doing the leadership class and we're doing it over Zoom. And it's as good as we can do, but I don't like it as well. But, but the culture is still alive and well. And, and these younger kids need to uh, be indoctrinated just a little bit more. And hopefully through these games, the game experiences will get that. How's that for a ninety-seven thousand dollar answer to your question, huh? <laughs> Perfect. Okay, Roger, I have one for you. Okay. Are we finally going to beat San Diego this year? I just want to be one and zero this week. Okay, I know. I just I know, I just, so I I know that's I know that's in April. <laughs> I just and then I just, again in the fall. So I'm saying this year. <laughs> well, you're giving me a lot of time. I appreciate the extra time. I am exactly. Out. I'm giving you plenty of time. I do think this, I, they do a great job. I mean, they, they do a phenomenal job. They do. And, uh, and they've really done a great job recruiting, not only that, and coaching, developing kids. The, we're getting closer. We're getting a lot closer. And, and sometimes the score hasn't always reflected it, but athletically and size-wise, they're really the, the team that we shoot for. How you doing? And, and so, How are you? So we, we feel we feel we're getting closer to them now are we going to be able to play out there I, i'm holding my breath all the time i don't know you know dennis dennis martin claims that they're, they're ready to go and i hope i hope they are and i hope we get an opportunity to play out there 
because I'd, I'd like to see where we're at now because I think we have improved. Um, but we got to stay healthy. I mean, we're, we're a couple, just like everyone, you got to stay pretty healthy. Dennis, I see you chimed in and de mic yourself. Go ahead. Uh, they're, yeah, they're ready to go. They, they, uh, how many years in a row have they won it? Seven or something? I don't need to be reminded about that, Dennis. But I just say, don't remind us. Hey, we almost beat them at their homecoming that year. We did once. We right. did. But that doesn't ask, ask Roger that question the week of the game. Then he'll say, I just want to be 1 0 this week. That's it. 1 0 this week. I will send you that message, Roger. Perfect. <laughs> you know Perfect. I will. <laughs> I know you will. I appreciate it. All right. And I apologize, everybody. I lost my video, so I'm only coming in with audio right now. But one that came in from Don in the chat, since we cannot tailgate at games, is there another way parents can connect? That would be especially helpful for new parents. Huh, that is a great, great question. And um, <clears throat> I know that I know that there has been some Facebook things. I know that I would suggest maybe I could help you set up a Zoom call or something like that for everybody and uh, and, and kind of get to know each other that way, for lack of a better way to do it. Because um, if I get people all together, Stetson gets a little nervous about getting more than 10 people in a room together with that stuff. But I think that's actually a good thing. I do think that there may be something going on at the VFW around the game, whether that's tailgating or not. But I know Main Street, where my wife may work, and she gets herself ready for the game. Um, there may be some things over at the VFW you might want to check out as well. Not that I would know anything about that, but I've heard about it. And Don, I will chime in really quick and say, um, since you are a new parent, and welcome to the Hatter family, by the way, we usually, typically, the alumni office, we travel to, obviously, we're there at home games, and we travel to away games as well and host tailgates for any alumni and parents that travel or are in the area. So we'd love to keep doing more of these. Unfortunately, we cannot travel this fall. We're not going to be able to travel to any of the away games, which is unfortunate, and we're very sad about it. But we'd love to keep doing more of these Zoom and virtual gatherings, whatever anybody wants to see. You can reach out to any of us in our office, myself or anybody else in the alumni office. Reach out to us if there's any kind of specific event you might want to try and run or set up or you might want to see us do. But we, I've talked with Roger already. Of, you know, if there's excitement and there's some kind of potential, we'd love to do another one of these, maybe midway through the season, bring everybody back together before the back half of the schedule. But again, that's one way to stay involved. You can always reach out to us in the office and we'll keep you as engaged as we can with Stetson. Uh, I appreciate that. And Roger, this, I appreciate your, your response yeah. and what you've done for us, you know, as being freshman parents and uh, keeping us in the Zoom meetings because we sure didn't get that at Penn State when I was there. Well. Exactly. And I'm still pissed off at Penn State because there's that little chunk in the back of the end zone where they stole the national championship from Nebraska. Not that I remember that, but that was not good. Okay? Not good. No. Well, thank you. For, I appreciate what you do. Thanks, Don. I appreciate it. Jackson's, Jackson's getting better. I put my arm around him the other day as, as, uh, as we talked about. He's, he'll be okay. Yeah. Well, you stay after him. Well, we will. I stay after the grades. You stay after him on the football field. Count on it. Yep. <laughs> All right. So as we wrap it up here, I do just want to say thank you to everybody for, for joining tonight, taking time out of your day to join us. I really appreciate it. And thank you to Roger for doing this with us. We are, we are really excited to get back to football. I know Roger, you mentioned not even knowing, you know, what's going to happen on Saturday. We're just happy that Hatter football is back and we cannot be more excited for that. So we're really pumped that Hatter football is back. Everybody make sure if you're not at the game, you are tuning in on ESPN plus this weekend and I did see a couple drinks floating around. So if anybody wants to raise their glass and just offer a cheers to Stetson football this season for a safe, healthy, and successful season and go Hatters. Hey, go Alex, Hatters. Before, uh, Alex, before you shut it down, parents, I just want to make a quick. Go quick Hatters. After the game on Saturday, we are going to go in the locker room and then we're going to go right back to the ATC as fast as we can. We're not going to have that area where everybody usually gathers right after the game. And we're going to give them their post game meal here at the ATC. So once we get them back here, then we'll dismiss them. And if they want to, you know, see their parents or you guys or whatever, but during, from the time we get off the field after the game's over, we're going to keep them kind of sequestered in the locker room and then get them right on the bus and get up again to try to minimize or mitigate any type of uh, transfer of any, um, any virus if there happens to be any out there. So I hope you understand that. And if you could help me out, 
<coughs> and not try to run on the field to hug your hug your son when the game's over. That would be that would help me out a bunch. Thanks so much for being there. Thanks so much for the 150 members and everyone who who follows stats and it, it, it goes directly to helping you improve uh, all the players' experience. And uh, I hope you guys are all smiling about uh, seven days from now with the results of Saturday. We'll see what happens. Thanks. Thanks, Roger. Good luck. Coach. Thanks. Coach. Thanks, Roger. You bet. Thank you, guys. Oh. Win. Coach. Good Thank luck, Coach. Robin. Someone had a question? See you, Coach. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Coach Roger, I have a question about Trinity Conway. Yeah. Hey, this is his mom. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm driving, so forgive me. No um, I know. I, how's he? How's he progressing? Being that he's under co con concussion protocol, is like, do you guys see an improvement with him and everything? Absolutely. Now we saw we saw a great improvement over the last three or four days. Now yesterday he had a bit of a setback. He got a headache again, and I think it was oh. induced. So we don't mess with that stuff. As soon as he has any more symptoms, we just calm him down and just, and just wait till he fully recovers. So uh, he's he's definitely better than he was. He took right. a little, he took a little setback. I believe it was yesterday, or maybe mm -hmm. it was this morning. I can't remember which. In fact, I talked to him just to practice, see how he's doing. He said, "I'm getting better. It's just I had a little setback today." So we don't we don't mess with that stuff. We make sure that we give him plenty of time to recover. Okay, I haven't been able to get there because my youngest son tested positive for COVID. So I'm in Miami. So it's just been a very trying time. And I haven't been able to say I was going to wait till I spoke with you to see how's he doing, if there's anything that I need to do. We're planning on coming up. I mean, he tested positive a few weeks ago. He tested negative last week. So we're good to go. So that means rephrase that. But we're planning to come into the game on Saturday. So I just wanted to ask you, you know, how's he doing in your opinion and everything like that, coach? I, I think he's doing great. The thing I love about a smile on his face every morning, you know, and I, and uh, I, talk I to miss the, that. the team every day. So he's, he's been great. He's going to help us at some point in time. There's no question about that. Okay. Awesome. He's looking forward to that. He felt such a, he feels so bad because Devin is doing so well. And that's that they're all good friends. He's happy for them, but he feels like he, you know, he can't do anything because of the situation. Now it's like everything happens for a reason, but, and it could be worse. I'm glad he's getting better. And I look forward to, seeing you guys this Saturday and rooting for you guys too. So thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Um, I just, appreciate just, you coach. Just remind him Rome's not built in a day. You know, we got, we got, <laughs> time, you know, he's got, he's got a couple more years, but yeah, we, we couldn't be more pleased with him. He's, he's been, he's been a really not, he's not really a surprise, but uh, he's done a really good job of acclimating and doing what we want. And, and so I, I foresee great things from him. Okay, great. And I just want to make sure he's healing well. There's nothing else we can do for him while he's while he's under this concussion protocol correct yeah we just I, we let him do it and and uh but they're monitoring you know they give him a computer test every morning to see where their symptoms are and everything so they're 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 on top of that our, our, our sports medicine staff's really on, on the wall with that yes sir and i wanted to say thank you to your coaching staff and to you too for taking care of my young man <laughs> oh, thank you. okay thank thank you. You. I appreciate it. You have a wonderful day, sir. Thank you. Good night. Right. Blessings to you. Blessings to you and your coaches. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Coach. Go Hatters. Thanks, Roger. Thank you. Debbie, are you going to come up the game or not? I am not. I'm going to I'm going to watch them. I'm going to try to get a Zoom call together. Rennell and I were talking about trying to get something together so that to so have an alumni event. I'll come get you. <laughs> don't make it easy on her Susie that's good I'm gonna make it easy on her no I know well and the one the one game is Easter weekend yeah so I know that's what time is practice tomorrow Roger tomorrow's at 10 30 first group on the field at 10 20 and then Thursday at 6 15 in the morning because they got we got these <laughs> two days where it's like spring break so they gave them two community days they did so I try not to make it, but we got our, our COVID test at seven o'clock tomorrow. Okay. So I'll be behind the fence. Thank you. Thank you. you left the door open this morning. I got real nervous. The gate door was open and I thought, hmm. I can't, I can't help what wanders in once I leave the gate open. You know, what I mean? <laughs> you know she's going to sneak in. I, absolutely. I didn't know last time I was very good and left when they told me to. Well, last time you were there, you got me in trouble too for being on the field, but. I, I know. I took the heat. But you invited me, so I didn't feel bad. <laughs> and I denied it, too. A special exception. All righty, I'm leaving. I love you all. Bye, See Susie. You guys. See ya. Be safe.
Good night. Night, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye, Thank Coach. you, Roger. Bye-bye.